Hey everybody, I'm JJ, you're watching Reality Survival, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 nuclear attack myths. There's a lot of really poor information out there on the internet, and so uh, with Reality Survival being the title of this channel, I'm just trying to keep it real so people understand what the real threats are out there. So, number one. You hear this all the time. The defeatists will, will light up the comments anytime you do a video about nuclear war survival skills and that kind of thing. And they say, no one can survive. <laughs> and that is just simply not true. It's not true at all. Um, nuclear war is a very survivable event as long as you do some basic things to be prepared for it. And we've talked about that. You can go watch all the, the whole series, the Nuclear War Survival Skills uh, series playlist on YouTube right here. Um, let's see. Number two is if you're close enough to see the bright light, you'll die from radi radiation poisoning. That is not true either. Um, majority of the immediate radiation is going to stay contained somewhere in the area of the fireball. So if you're not burned up in the explosion or very, very close to that point, then if, if you shelter quickly and appropriately, you could definitely survive. If you're further away, then you definitely have a very, very good chance of surviving it as long as you seek good shelter. Then the fallout after that is where you, your secondary potential for exposure to radiation is, and we've talked about that in several videos as well. Okay, number three, if no one, or if one side uses any missiles, then the other side is going to launch their, all of their missiles, and it'll be a full-on out exchange. So that concept is just entirely not true. Uh, a lot of people believe that if anybody uses one, then everybody's going to use them all. And that, that is not true at all. Um, it's, it's very clear that all nations who possess nuclear weapons currently understand the idea of mutually assured destruction. And it's far more likely that it would be a limited exchange in the first few bouts before it goes to all-out exchange. So there, there, is, there is a very good chance that if, if somebody did use one, there would be a limited response to that. Okay, let's see here. Number, oh yeah, number four is nuclear fallout from a nuclear bomb is worse than nuclear fallout from a nuclear reactor that's melted down. That is also not true. The fallout from a nuclear reactor is much worse and lasts a lot longer than fallout from a nuclear bomb. The, the way that I like to think about it in my head, and it's probably not technically correct, but it's pretty close, is, is that when a nuclear bomb goes off, you have fission and then fusion and then fission again. With a nuclear reactor, it's just fission. That fission process takes a lot longer and it continues to spew out fallout. With that fusion being involved in the nuclear bomb, it, it, it's sort of like it burns through um, the radiation and causes those reactions to happen at a faster rate, so they decay faster. That's not exactly correct, but it's the way that I associate it in my, in my head. Um, all right, so, but anyway, the point is, is that a nuclear uh, reactor will continue to go through the fission process if it melted down, and it would, that, that lasts a lot longer. Uh, we've done a video talking about how nuclear um, power plants are very safe, and they're very unlikely to melt down, melt down, so you can see that video as well if you like. Okay, number five. Uh, an EMP detonation high up in the atmosphere will cause a lot of fallout. And the idea is, is that it's going to get up in the jet stream, it's going to cause fallout all over the place. That is not true. Actually, the higher up a nuclear bomb detonates, the less fallout there will be. And that the reason is, is that the fallout comes from all of the sediment and the dirt and everything like that that gets sucked up into the mushroom cloud. That's what primarily causes most of the fallout. So uh, if there isn't anything sucked up into a, a uh, mushroom cloud, then there won't be hardly any fallout at all. Okay, 
Number six is a high altitude nuclear detonation will knock out the entire US power grid with one detonation. Now I've been on videos talking about this several times in the past when that was the conventional knowledge. But we now know, uh, based on an e a recent study from EPRI, that that is not the case. One high altitude nuclear detonation will probably knock out several states. And those several states will have their, their power restored sometime within a few months. So as opposed to several years. Again, as we move forward in, uh, into the future and these things get studied, the study I'm referring to was a three year study. It was very exhaustive and it, it's uh, far, far more credible than the previous stuff that was done. Um, but as we move through and, and we learn more about this stuff, this, the technology changes and the inf what we understand about uh, those kind of events changes and so we need to adjust it. Uh, let's see. Number seven is nuclear bombs are more deadly than all types of weapons. That is just not true at all. Uh, chemical weapons can easily compete with the numbers of the death tolls that uh, nuclear weapons have. Biological weapons can far exceed the death toll of what nuclear weapons can and are far more dangerous if they were ever delivered correctly. And even traditional bombing raids of highly populated areas can rival the death tolls of nuclear weapons. Believe it or not, they actually can. Um, when if, if you're looking at the death tolls of even some of the World War II bombings when um, the planes couldn't carry as much, couldn't carry as heavy a payload and all that kind of stuff, they were still competing with the uh, nuclear bombs as far as deaths goes when they were doing fire bombings over Tokyo and that kind of thing. So um, conventional can be even close. All right, number eight, rebuilding will be impossible because all the soil will be contaminated. That's just not true because fallout will only happen in specific areas and most countries nowadays actually set their detonations to go off at an optimal height above the city to cause a lot of infrastructure damage with the blast. If they go off too low, all the buildings and, and um, all that will block the blast and it won't do as much damage. So they're actually now setting them up to a higher detonation to do more, more infrastructure damage, which means that there'll be less fallout in general anyway. Uh, so that'll shrink the fallout footprint overall. Okay, uh, let's see, the next one here is nuclear winter will kill all the crops for several years and we'll all starve to death. I did a video talking about this recently. Carl Sagan was the primary guy who liked to, to scare everybody about nuclear winter. And the problem is, is he was just wrong. It does not, nuclear winter is not something that is going to black out the skies and keep things for growing, from growing forever. Nuclear winter isn't even a real thing. It would be more like a cool summer. Uh, you might see a few weeks to maybe a month or so, month or so uh, of slightly cooler temperatures, and then that's it. It'll dissipate and go back to normal. So, uh, let's see here. Number 10. Oh, Russia's nuclear, arsen R Russia's nuclear arsenal is more advanced than the U.S. arsenal. Um, they have come up with some designs for new weapons, but they don't have the money to be able to put all those new designs into practice, nor do they have the ability to um, manufacture those, those weapons without U.S. technology and U.S. chips, and so it's really not a problem. <laughs> um, and the United States arsenal is extraordinarily well maintained and in tip-top shape. So. I, I don't think that uh, there is any any sort of, I mean, if you just look at what has happened in, in the uh, Ukraine-Russia war, you can see the state of the Russian military, and it is awful. <laughs> it's really, really awful, and that applies across the board. Anyhow, that is just my list for my top 10 nuclear attack myths. I would love to hear what you guys think your... Uh, top 10 myths are about the nuclear war. Stick them down in the comments below. We can all, all read them and share together. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. Click, uh, Please click the thumbs up button and subscribe. Go over to Twitter and follow me on Twitter at Reality Survival. 
I'll be doing my um, kind of sharing the news stories out on Twitter for the Prepper Sit Rep. Um, this, it'll be a little more timely way to get the information to you because doing a weekly brief, it's sort of, it's like a week old. And in today's day and age, the way information moves so fast, I think that people will probably appreciate it more if they can get it faster. So go over to Twitter. It's actually a lot better than it used to be, believe it or not. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten back on since Elon got it, um, it's, it's, it's a lot better atmosphere um, in many, many ways. So check it out. Hey, and if you would like to, uh, you can also subscribe to my Substack at realitysurvival.substack.com. That will enable me to send all these videos to you straight out to your inbox. I don't sell the email list, um, and I'm just going to use it to communicate you with the, about the content that I produce. Um, we'll also be sending out the videos from my secondary channel, which is JJ's DIY Homestead, and I'll put a link to that down in the description below. But that all that content will all be delivered via the Substack, so you can see that all in one place. But if you guys want to subscribe over there too, that would be really appreciated. All right, thanks guys. Take care, and don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe.